Welcome to the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report, hosted by Craig Dawson, Vice President, Soul Pit Media. Welcome to the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report. Today we have Dr. Nadia Jonasay, hepatologist, UPMC Center for Liver Diseases, Vice Chair, Diversity and Inclusion, UPMC Department of Medicine. Doctor, welcome to the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report. Thanks, Craig. Happy to be here. Well, Doctor, thank you so much for your time. Doctor, growing up, did you always envision yourself becoming a physician? I did. It's a pretty boring story. I have pretty vivid memories of being a four-year-old girl and my uncle coming to visit me and me sitting on his lap and him saying, Nadia, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a doctor. And he said, anything else? And I said, no. And I never really wavered from that throughout the course of my life. Doctor, in doing my research for this podcast, I see that you are the medical director of the hepatology department. Can you talk to our listeners a little about your department and what you do? Medical hepatology really is about taking care of patients with general liver disease processes. So that could be something anywhere from viral hepatitis, including hepatitis B or hepatitis C, to fatty liver disease, which many people have started to hear about because we have such a pandemic of hypertension and diabetes, to taking care of people before and after liver transplantation. So it really is a wide variety of kind of what we would call garden variety liver disease and the common things that we see on a daily basis, but then some very, very severe liver disease where people have gone on from having what we call a garden variety disease to having pretty advanced liver disease and taking care of those people as they prepare for transplantation and then thereafter, after they actually have the surgery. Now, doctor, I understand that you work with both pre and post transplant patients. Do statistics differ in the outcomes in a minority community as opposed to the outcomes in the general population? So it's interesting that you would ask me that question. So there was a paper written in the late 1990s talking about that the referral base being different, right? So for the, the amount that we're represented, particularly minorities in the general population, we don't get referred, we don't tend not to get referred for transplantation as much as some other piece, other uh, races in the general population. In regards to the outcomes, there have been some papers to suggest that Latinx populations and Black populations, even Asian populations, don't survive as well, particularly after liver transplant, as do whites. But that has since uh, time been further explored. And it seems as though that there's not a huge difference in the transplantation survival, especially after liver transplantation in Blacks as compared to whites and Latinx and Asians. The one thing that I will say is that we recently wrote a paper suggesting that for those people with liver cancer, there does seem to be a disparate outcome, meaning there is a difference in the outcome when we look at different racial populations. So it's just something that we have to be very, very aware of. I think from the primary care level and people who are referring, gastroenterologists who are referring for transplantation, not just for liver, but even for kidney transplantation, heart transplantation, lung transplantation, we just have to remember that we're applying things equally across populations and that people, early care is probably necessary never wrong, right? You can never really send someone too early. The worst that's going to happen is we're going to send somebody back to you saying, this person actually is not ready for transplantation. But when you send somebody too late, that certainly can have a significant effect on the course of their life. So in essence, the earlier a disease is diagnosed, the better the potential outcome that's right. So you just want to be, again, I think sometimes we want to be, you know, the connoisseur of every disease, but we just want to know we can constantly ask our subspecialty friends, which I kind of think of myself as, you know, a super subspecialist. We can always ask our subspecialty friends for help to just say, am I on the right track here? Is this person okay? Am I continue? Is it okay for me to continue to take care of this person in the community? Or should this person really be coming to an academic center, a larger center to get their subspecialty care taken care of at this point? Because again, the sooner people are seen, the more likely they are to survive from their more advanced disease when that occurs. Now, doctor, liver disease is a huge problem in general, but a bigger problem in the minority community. What can we do as a community to help combat this dreaded disease? So let me start by saying a lot of people hear the word liver or they hear cirrhosis and automatically people think of alcohol. And that's unfortunately one of the stigmas of advanced liver disease. What we very well know is that there is a great majority of people, you know, there used to be an issue of hepatitis C and that, you know, now that hepatitis C is curable, that has kind of gone away. But I think the really, really big thing is that we have to understand that there is a pandemic going on really in regards to what we call fatty liver disease. And the risk factors for fatty liver disease are really 
those things that we think is pretty common diseases, particularly in the minority community, including hypertension, high cholesterol, and diabetes. So it really, really, really behooves us to make sure that we're keeping track of those things and staying on top of those things because not only can they cause very advanced liver disease, probably somewhere in the next five to 10 years, fatty liver disease is going to be the number one reason why we transplant people in this country. But in addition to that, we know that probably about 20% of our patients that have fatty liver disease and have advanced liver disease as a result of that will go on to have silent you know, myocardial infarction, so MI, the thing we think of as a heart attack. So those are the things that are really, really important. Staying on top of those common diseases these processes, our obesity, our diabetes, our hypertension, and our cholesterol that can really protect us from the longstanding effects of liver disease long-term. That's an amazing fact. And I learned so much in doing this podcast, talking to the doctors from UPMC. I find myself learning more and more with these podcasts. Doctor, I wanted to ask you, transplant equity has been recently highlighted and it's been highlighted how it directly affects our community. What steps has UPMC taken to address this problem? I mean, I think there's a couple things. You know, I'm I'm a liver doctor, so I won't get too much into all of transplantation, but I think in regards to transplant in general, we are really trying to use, I think, technology and innovation to help us to identify patients even before primary care doctors might send them to us. So if I know, for example, let me just take the kidney, for example, if I know a creatinine of 1.5 is not normal for somebody, then I can just automatically pull that number from the chart and I can automatically electronically refer that person to a kidney doctor. And then that kidney doctor, now taken out of the PCP's hand, could then say, okay, well, I'm afraid that you might progress, you know, your kidney disease might progress over time and you may need dialysis at some point. So I want to continue to keep track of you. So I think one of the things that we're doing is we're kind of taking some of that decision-making and some of what might people might consider some bias out of the physician's hand. And we're just saying, what we know is that this is some level of kidney disease or liver disease. And we can identify that very, very easily through technology and maybe just refer that person to a subspecialist. And it's early, so we know we've captured that person early. We can watch them over time. And if things, and if it comes to that point, right, if transplantation comes to be needed at some point in time for whatever organ it is, then we can intervene at that time. The other thing is that obviously you all probably know because you've heard about it multiple times, is that the living donor program at UPMC is very, very robust. And what this allows us to do, the commercials kind of, I think are a little bit sensational, but it's the idea of taking someone out of a line. In regards to transplantation, right, most people, no matter what the organ is, have to wait in line until they get sick or they spend enough time on dialysis, et cetera, in order to be considered for transplantation. And what living donor transplantation does in both kidney and liver disease is it says, if someone who knows me, and, and sometimes often someone who doesn't even know me, if someone you know can intervene on my behalf and understands that I have severe disease, they could offer up donation to me. So just to make this very simple, if my mother had kidney disease, then I could say, you know, mom, I've seen you on dialysis for a year and you really seem to be struggling and you were so, you know, productive and you were kind of so, you had so much energy before. Let me give you my kidney so that you can come off dialysis. That's something in the United States that typically can't happen before five years. Most people stay on the kidney transplant waiting list for five years before they're even considered for an organ. But what we see now is we see people being, again, taken out of line by their family members by people that know them in their community, by people in their churches, by people in their synagogues to say, I really want to give you an opportunity at a better life and improve your health. And I think that that's a pretty amazing thing to see happen for a patient because it really is life-changing, not having to wait until you're on death's door or you really kind of have given up hope on having any chance of moving on and having somebody who loves you, cares about you, may not even be related to you for all intents and purposes, take you out of line and give you a, a second chance at life is pretty amazing. We'll be right back with the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report. The Port Authority of Allegheny County is hiring. If you're looking for a long-term career, competitive wages, great benefits, and desire an opportunity where very few days are the same, check out the opportunities at portauthority.org. We are driven to improve transit in the region. That's portauthority.org. We do all we can to ensure our kids are happy, healthy, safe, and strong. Having high-quality, low-cost health insurance helps make that possible. With CHIP, your child can have medical, dental, eye care, and more for free or low cost. Whether you're self-employed, unemployed, or your employee benefits are just too expensive, CHIP is there for you to help your child be strong. CHIP Strong. Apply or renew today at 800-986-KIDS or go to chipcoverspakids.com. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Looking for a cost-effective way to help increase your company's bottom line? 
Look no further than Soul Pit Media with our award-winning print, internet, podcasts, and Soul Pit television options. We can help your business get to that next level. For more information, contact Craig Dawson at 412-407-7685. That's 412-407-7685. And let Soul Pit Media take you to that next level. UPMC is committed to addressing the health disparities that disproportionately impact African Americans in our communities. By driving education, training, and programming, and building relationships with our community partners, we can ensure that all individuals and families have access to the preventive care, screenings, and treatment that can lead to healthier lives. Learn more at upmc.com slash health disparities. With a ramped up commitment to investing in local black owned businesses, Duquesne Light Company in partnership with the new Pittsburgh Courier presents Small Business Spotlight powered by DLC. Published twice per month, the Small Business Spotlight profiles two black owned businesses and provides each of them with a free quarter page ad to promote their business. Do you know a business that should be featured? Visit newpittsburghcourier.com forward slash small business spotlight for more information. The future of transit is now and we are working to improve your ride. Look for bus tracking technologies and other innovations to keep you better informed. Getting around town has never been so easy. Portauthority.org. We're back with the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report. Now, doctor, in doing my research for this podcast, I saw that your patients gave you a 4.9 rating out of 5.0, which is almost unheard of in the medical community. What drives you to deliver such outstanding care to your patients? You know, Craig, I've had the advantage of, you know, I have the advantage of being a wife um, and a mother, but I've had, you know, my child has been sick before, right? So I've been on the other side of things. I, unfortunately, part of my personal story is also losing my older sister to metastatic breast cancer. So having to interface with the medical community and being on the other side, I think, helps you to have a certain amount of empathy for the patient. In addition to that, I always share with my patients that I would tell them to do nothing that I wouldn't tell my loved ones to do. I still get up from the time I was four until now, I've wanted to be a doctor, and I still get up excited every single day that I'm a physician because a young girl from the east side of Cleveland, for all intents and purposes, who shouldn't have had this life does have this life. And I'm still excited about that, you know, the fact that I had this opportunity and I see it as a blessing to take care of patients. So for me, I try to often reverse the roles and say, if I were in their shoes, what would I want to hear? How would I want my physician to interact with me in this moment? Realizing that I'm sometimes ushering people into a situation where they're going to have a life-saving procedure, but in turn, I'm also half the time ushering someone into a situation where they're not going to get a life-saving procedure and they may lose their life. And I don't take that for granted. So in my mind, my patients are a blessing to me as much as I'm a blessing to them. And I kind of really just put myself in a position where I'm constantly saying, they are my mother, they are my father, they are my sister. What would I want this person on the other side of the desk or the other side of this bed to do for me in this moment? Doctor, I have to commend you, though, because I grew up in Ohio and I do know a little bit about Cleveland and the east side of Cleveland. And you are truly a one out of 100 for you to achieve what you have achieved and to get the type of rating that you get from your patients is truly something that I have to take my hat off to you. I really do. I appreciate that, Craig. I really do appreciate that. It brings me a lot of joy. That evaluation is important to me and the interaction is important to me. And like I said, I continue every single day to feel blessed by that interaction. And I hope that I don't have to work a day past feeling that way when I wake up. Now, doctor, speaking of that, how can our listeners and website viewers, if they are in need of your services, how can they contact you? So I would say the easiest way is call our office. Our phone number here in the office is 412-647-1170. I will put it out there. My nurse specifically is Crystal, so you can ask for her. Juliana is my scheduler, so you can always reach us there. If you have any questions or concerns, and even if it's something trivial and you think it's not important, 
please, please, please feel like you can contact us. We have people here to answer your questions. I'm happy myself to intervene and call people back. People often are shocked to hear me on the other side of the line because they've never gotten a phone call, they say, from a physician before. But I just want to let people in the community know that we're here for you. Even if you think it's early, even if you think it's a trivial question, feel free to give us a call. Our nurses here are happy to answer any questions for you. And we just want you all to know that we're here at the Center for Liver Disease. And if it comes to it, and at some point, Point, you do need transplantation in the course of your lifetime. We are also here for that critical time in your life. So I just want to encourage you all to uh, reach out to us if you need to. Doctor, I must thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on the podcast today. And I have to tip my hat to UPMC. We have tried to make a difference in the community as far as the health care that our community receives. And UPMC has been a great partner, and at some point, we have to have you back on the show just to help level the playing field as far as healthcare in the Pittsburgh area. And I want to thank you once again for your time this evening. Well, Craig, I hope so. I hope I get to meet you in person someday. And I also hope that community will drive us to continue to do the things that we need to do. You know, some of the questions that we need to answer in health are the things that the community are going to bring to us. So not only should we be going out, but we should have the community coming in. So I thank you so much for having me. It will be a pleasure for me to come back. And I hope to see you soon. Absolutely, doctor. Thank you so much for your time. We'll be right back with the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report. The Port Authority of Allegheny County is hiring. If you're looking for a long-term career, competitive wages, great benefits, and desire an opportunity where very few days are the same, check out the opportunities at portauthority.org. We are driven to improve transit in the region. That's portauthority.org. We do all we can to ensure our kids are happy, healthy, safe, and strong. Having high-quality, low-cost health insurance helps make that possible. With CHIP, your child can have medical, dental, eye care, and more for free or low cost. Whether you're self-employed, unemployed, or your employee benefits are just too expensive, CHIP is there for you to help your child be strong. CHIP Strong. Apply or renew today at 800-986-KIDS or go to chipcoverspakids.com. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. Looking for a cost-effective way to help increase your company's bottom line? Look no further than Soul Pit Media. With our award-winning print, internet, podcasts, and Soul Pit television options, we can help your business get to that next level. For more information, contact Craig Dawson at 412-407-7685. That's 412-407-7685. And let Soul Pit Media take you to that next level. UPMC is committed to addressing the health disparities that disproportionately impact African Americans in our communities. By driving education, training, and programming, and building relationships with our community partners, we can ensure that all individuals and families have access to the preventive care, screenings, and treatment that can lead to healthier lives. Learn more at upmc.com slash health disparities. With a ramped up commitment to investing in local black owned businesses, Duquesne Light Company, in partnership with the new Pittsburgh Courier, presents Small Business Spotlight, powered by DLC. Published twice per month, the Small Business Spotlight profiles two black owned businesses and provides each of them with a free quarter page ad to promote their business. Do you know a business that should be featured? Visit newpittsburghcourier.com forward slash small business spotlight for more information. The future of transit is now and we are working to improve your ride. Look for bus tracking technologies and other innovations to keep you better informed. Getting around town has never been so easy. Portauthority.org. We're back with the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report. Hi, this is Debbie Norell, and welcome to the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report Community Calendar. The Anna Middleton Weight Learning Center will host their annual golf outing on Saturday, August 7th at the Yakagani Country Club in McKeesport. Sponsorships are available for $100. Play in a foursome or as an individual. For more information, contact Paul Waite at PWAITE. 2407 at comcast.net. 
So Jenner House will hold their 17th annual Victorian Tea on Sunday, August 15th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Omni William Penn Hotel in downtown Pittsburgh. Social hour will be from 1 to 2 p.m. The Victorian Tea is their signature fundraiser and awareness event that brings together over 300 individuals. Attendees enjoy a traditional tea, silent auction, and raffle while learning about the award-winning work of Sojourner House and Sojourner House Moms and hearing the inspiring stories of the families who have lived there. Visit www.sjhpa.org for tickets. The Heinz Endowments is seeking community nominations for Pittsburgh's Cultural Treasures, an initiative the endowments recently launched in collaboration with the Poise Foundation to celebrate the work and accomplishments of Black cultural treasures in southwestern Pennsylvania. The program is part of a regional challenge initiative created by the Ford Foundation called America's Cultural Treasures, which is designed to recognize and increase support for cultural organizations representing communities of color. The endowments is one of 10 foundations in seven cities that Ford invited to participate in the initiative. The Endowments invites residents to nominate the people, places, groups, moments, or memories they regard as cultural treasures using an online nomination form. There will be numerous ways in which those nominated will be honored during the three to five years of the Pittsburgh's Cultural Treasures Initiative. However, nominations do not guarantee funding from the program. For more on the initiative, visit Pittsburgh's Cultural Treasures. Thank you for listening to the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report brought to you by Port Authority Employment. Looking for a great job with benefits? Check out their website, portauthority.org, and click on Careers. Thank you for tuning in to the Soul Pit Media Health and Business Report, hosted by Craig Dawson, Vice President, Soul Pit Media. Thank you, Pittsburgh, for your continued support.